Thank you for joining me. For the purposes of our time together, I'm Joseph Rajad Kipling. I'd like to take this opportunity to share with you some of my poetry. And as I do, to tell you a little something of myself. Yes, my first given name was Joseph, but to the world I was known as Rudyard, and to my friends and family as Rudd or Ruddy. Joseph was a traditional family name on my father's side, which alternating with the name John would be given to the firstborn son. But Rudyard? Well, my parents first met when they attended a picnic held alongside Rudyard Lake in Staffordshire when they were both holidaying there. It was also the location when they chose to officially announce their engagement. I have, however, heard subsequent reports that my parents supposedly honeymooned there. And like some of your modern day celebrities, my parents did in part pay me after the location where I was conceived. Well, far be it for me to disabuse you as a such a fanciful notion. But if that indeed were the case, I would now be appearing before you as Joseph Skipton Kipling. Not quite the same ring. What is for certain is that I was born in India, Bombay to be exact, modern day Mumbai, on the 30th of December, 1865. My mother, Alice, name MacDonald, was one of the four famous MacDonald sisters, all of whom were to marry respectable men of the age. Sir Edward Byrne Jones, the pre-Raphaelite painter, Alfred Baldwin, Father of the future Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin, Sir Edward Pointer, artist and president of the Royal Academy. And in my mother's case, last but by no means least, John Lockwood Kipling, who was to become the curator of the museum at Lahore. My first impression is of daybreak, light and colour, golden and purple fruits at the level of my shoulder. Now this will be the memory of the early morning visits to the Bombay fruit market with my ayah, my nurse, and later with my sister Trixie in her perambulator, and of our return with our purchases piled high on the bar of it. In the afternoon heats, before we took our sleep, our nurse would tell us stories and Indian nursery rhymes, all still unforgotten. And we were shown into the dining room after being dressed with the caution, now speak English to mama and to papa. And so, we spoke English, haltingly translated out of the vernacular idiom that we naturally thought and dreamed in. The way through the woods. They shut the road through the woods 70 years ago. Weather and rain have undone it again. And now you would never know there was once a road through the woods before they planted the trees. It is underneath the coppice and the heath and the thin anemones. Only the keeper sees that where the ring dug broods and the badgers roll at ease. There was once a road through the woods. And yet, if you enter those woods of a summer evening late, when the night air calls on the trout ring pools and the otter whistles his mate, although fear not men in the woods because they see so few, you will hear the beat of a horse's feet and the swish of a skirt in the dew, steadily cantering through the misty solitudes as if they perfectly knew that old lost road through the woods. But there is no road through the woods. Tommy, I went into a public house to get a pint of beer. The publican yum says, Court, <laughs> we serve no red coats here. The girls behind the bar, well, they laughed and they giggled, fit the die. Now it's into the street again until myself says, I, oh, it's Tommy this and it's Tommy that and Tommy go away. But thank you, Mr. Ritkins. When the band begins to play, the band begins to play, me boy, the band begins to play. Oh, it's thank you, Mr. Ritkins. When the band begins to play, I went into a theatre, as sober as could be. Well, I found a drunk civilian room, but they hadn't none for me. They'll send me to the gallery and round the music all, so when it comes to fighting, Lord, then they will shove me in the storms. And it's Tommy this, and it's Tommy that, and Tommy went outside, but a special train for Atkins. 
when the troop is on the tide. The troop ship's on the tide, me boy. The troop ship's on the tide. Oh, it's special train for Atkins when the troopers on the tide. Now, making mock uniforms that guard you while you sleep is cheaper than them uniforms and they're starvation cheap. And hustling drunken soldiers when they go in large a bit. Why? That's why time's better business than parading in full kit. And it's Tommy this and Tommy that and Tommy as your soul. There's thin red line of heroes when those drums begin to roll. When those drums begin to roll, me boy, those drums begin to roll. Then it's thin red line of heroes when those drums begin to roll. Well, we ain't no thin red heroes, but we ain't no blackguards too. But single men in barracks, most remarkable, like you. And if sometimes our conduct isn't all your fancy pants, or single men in barracks don't grow into plaster saints. And it's Tommy this and Tommy that. Oh, and Tommy, walk behind. But please to walk in front, sir, when there's trouble in the wind. Trouble in the wind, me boy. Trouble in the wind. Oh, he's pleased to walk in front, sir, when there's trouble in the wind. You promise better food for us and schools and far and all. We'll wait for extra rations if you treat us rational. Don't mess about the cook crew's plots, but tell us to our face the widow's uniform is not the soldier man's disgrace. And it's Tommy this and it's Tommy that and chuck him out the brute. The hero of his country when those guns begin to shoot. And it's Tommy this and it's Tommy that and anything you please. But Tommy's not a blooming fool. You bet that Tommy sees. The age of six, my hitherto idyllic existence was to change for the worse. I was to be delivered up unto the house of dissolution. 